Welcome to Own the Chaos. The stock market is crazy and chaotic. Oh my God, are you seeing this shit, bro? Tesla closed at 695. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Brad and Fat Man Zoom are here to help you own it. Now with IBM getting here, I think it's just gonna come more to the forefront and people are gonna get more and more eyeballs on Salesforce. We should see a really nice move. Taking it to the suits, being relatable and hilarious. We got these nuts in the crew. Every Hell crew yeah. needs these nuts. <laughs> you know what these nuts is number one holding is? Big C. <laughs> get ready to own the chaos in three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Stock Watch Sunday, and welcome to Own the Chaos. My name is Brad. That guy over there is Fat Man Zoom. The stock market is crazy and chaotic, and we made it our mission to help you own it. Well, the stock market might be closed tomorrow, but we're here on Sunday still. And the topics of discussion, as always, are going to be our top five stocks that we're watching throughout the week, as they are on every Stock Watch Sunday. But we've got a couple other things we want to talk about. Is that right, Fat Man Zoom? Yes, sir. First, we're going to shout out the starting five. Today, we got Tammy Allen, Lynn's photo. Linston photo, <laughs> McTagg and Vinay. Shout out to you guys for getting early. Um, I think you're the starting five. I'm not sure. Um, oh, Alan was definitely first. I know that much. Uh, I think was he? You yes. sure Tammy wasn't before him? Yes, positive. Okay. Um, so those are our starting five for today. Um, shout out to you guys, and you don't count if you don't make a comment. So <laughs> um, for those of you who say you were here before whoever, as long as a comment was in then you get part of the starting five. But yeah, we're talking about, I wanted to bring up cannabis stocks because I feel like um, they had a crazy run yeah. and then they came down. A lot of people were jumping on the Tilray train. A lot of people, um, we benefited from Sundial. Yes. Um, CGC went off. They all went off. But then a lot, I, I guess all of them came crashing down, some more so than others. Yep. So I just want, you know, You've looked a lot into it. You've been a fan of uh, CGC. You've been in and out of Sundial. What's in store for for those stocks, the Canada stocks, moving forward this week and in the coming weeks? So the thing is, it, it, uh, thing of it is with the cannabis stocks is that they go in waves. You know, either they they start moving because legislation's putting something through that you know is just another step forward towards legalization or what have you. This time around, it started to move because you know, uh, Congress and, uh, and the latest Biden administration are moving towards steps or making steps towards decriminalization. But I think the issue is, is that people are getting decriminalization and legalization confused. And so, uh, you know, it has a run every time it does something like this. And so that's why the rug kind of got pulled, so to speak, you know, earnings came out from Aurora cannabis and, uh, CGC, which, Honestly, CGC had amazing earnings. Uh, Tilray also uh, just not really doing all that great. None of them are except for CGC. And I think that canopy growth, the only reason that that seems to be doing well and why that's my favorite one in, in particular is because it has backing from Constellation Brands, whereas the rest of them rely on cash and they have a hard time uh, you know, raising capital. They have a ton of debt. We saw that with Aurora Cannabis. Aurora has just diluted the stock to basically zero reverse splits, and then rinse and repeats. And I don't know why people love that stock so much or love that company so much because they just just thrash their investors uh, to no end. Whereas CGC is just a much healthier company. Yes, it costs a little bit more, but they have uh, so much more going for them than any other cannabis company in the market. Sundial was just a really nice short squeeze taking advantage of the situation. I got in, made over 300% gains. I got out because I saw the writing on the wall and, you know, when it comes down to a reasonable level and we start to see, you know, hype start to grow again on this, then I'll maybe then maybe I'll take another shot at it. All right. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, what I'm surprised about is how quickly it crashed. Yeah. As far as everything. And do we know there was if there was any sort of catalyst or whatever the opposite of that is for it to go down? No, I think the, the real the first, you know. Uh, needle in the balloon, if you will, um, was just Aurora um, coming out with earnings and everybody's like, oh yeah, we forgot just how shitty this company was. Yeah. And that started uh, selling off and then kind of the chips fell where they, they did. So, Oh, okay. Interesting. And so 
long term, it's safe to say you feel bullish about this, about about cannabis as far as the administration still? Yeah, I think that eventually it'll be decriminalized, but I think they still have a long road ahead of them as far as actual legalization, yeah. uh, you know, from a federal level. You know, the states are doing what they are, and that's great. But, you know, when you don't have that federal money behind your business, uh, or especially these ones that are trying to do, to achieve a corporate level status, it's, it's going to be really tough for them to continue to really move. All right. So there you have it as far as cannabis. Um, what else we got on the books? We got any other speculative things to talk about? <laughs> well, as the title says, Bitcoin got damn near uh, $50,000 per Bitcoin. Uh, right now, it's sitting at 48703 as of this very second. And it went up as high as 49385 and 90 cents, Fat Man Zoom. Do you recall us talking about something in our bold predictions for 2021? Did we say 50K? I said 50K, yeah, for 2021. We got close. I, I was not expecting. I got to say, like, when we first talked about it at the end of 2020, it was sitting at 20,000 or 25,000, somewhere around there. Yeah, and I thought yeah. that 50K was bold for this year. Yeah. And here we are, not even uh, two months through 2020, uh, 2021, and uh, is already threatening to break that. I think it does. Uh, but you actually are dabbling in some of the cryptocurrencies that you are in Bitcoin, but there's some other alternatives that might be a better investment as of right now. Yeah, I started with um, with Bitcoin and with Ethereum, and I was putting equal money towards it, and I stopped adding to Bitcoin. So I have my initial investment in Bitcoin, um, and I began just dollar cost averaging on Ethereum. Um, I started when it was around, I guess, 700 Yeah or so. Um, now I think it's around $1,800 and it's been great. I mean, it's outperformed Bitcoin um, pretty much in every, any time frame you're looking under a year. Yeah. Um, so it's great. I, I just, and not, it's not about the, how much they cost. It's really about my confidence level in the, the specific crypto asset. And so for me, I just feel more confident in Ethereum. It makes sense. Uh, Crypto is a hedge for me so they no matter which one i get into or not they're they're hedges yeah um but also i want to mention um bitcoin cash seems to be outperforming as well and so i'm not sure as bitcoin continues with the hype and continues to move does bitcoin cash move as well yeah um and so that's another one where i want to say it might be at like six hundred dollars or whatever like six or seven hundred dollars maybe a little less but it's it over the weekend it went up like 20 percent. so that's another one to keep an eye on i'm not investing in that but um i see that moving along as well with bitcoin so for me it's ethereum um and it's been great to me it's wild to me how everybody talks about you know the use cases that bitcoin and ethereum and all that uh, is concerned uh and then chamath palahapatia came out and talked about how he bought a property uh, for, I don't know, $1.4 million or something like that back in 2014, I want to say. He bought it in Bitcoin. Now, uh, if, if the way the Bitcoin had gone, it, it would have cost him $34 million. So, like, yeah. he missed out on that. So, it's interesting when we talk about use cases and it's like, I think... Do you, would you say that most people are probably afraid to even use this as a currency because they're like, well, if I spend $10 or worth of Bitcoin on a pizza right now, what's that going to cost me yeah. later on down the road? So first of all, I don't know if he actually did that. He tweet, you're talking about the tweet he put out. Yeah, I thought it was him. I, okay. Okay. I, I'm not sure. I interpreted it as he was showing an example of somebody. Um, and so that person... And if it was him, yeah, it ended up being a, a ridiculous amount, but I don't want you to get eaten alive in the, in the uh, yeah, comments no, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, people are using that example. Uh, it goes, you know, to me, it goes both ways. Yes, it could be, you can have a, a pizza that's worth, you know, half a million dollars, <laughs> or you can have a pizza worth three cents, you right. know, like yeah. we're in a great run for crypto. And I think at least in the short term, it's continue to be bullish on it just because of the stimulus and, and more institutions moving in for the long term. You know, there, I, it's like any other chart. It's going to move down, and this has shown ridiculous volatility. Yeah. Um, I imagine that we're going to hear a lot of people saying that this is different um, until 
I don't, I don't know at what point I'll believe that this is different, that we won't see a massive pullback. Um, but again, you know, we talked about if it gets back down to 25, 20, like we'd, we'd get in some. Yeah. Um, and people might think we're crazy, but it's shown it's able to, it, it's willing to go down that far, if not further than that. Oh my God. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it, it is wild, but you know, Tesla said they're willing to, use Bitcoin, uh, allow people to purchase Teslas with Bitcoin in the future. Yeah. Um, it works for high purchase ad to assets. Again, the disclaimer is, um, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert in Bitcoin. This isn't a channel about ex expertise in, in crypto assets. Yeah. But from what I do know, um, Bitcoin is not, um, a realistic use case is not day-to-day -day transactions is not small transactions. Some, you know, one-time purchases, luxury purchases that could make sense, but that's where Bitcoin cash comes into play where it could potentially be everyday purchases. So just to use Bitcoin um, is very tedious and it it's the store of value makes more sense um, as far as people moving away from like, let's say gold, as a hedge and a Bitcoin and just holding it forever. Like that seems to be the more realistic use case for it. Um, as it's about the scarcity of yeah. the asset, which is why I invest in square because <laughs> it is a hedge. So if you guys are looking for other alternatives, as far as uh, crypto is concerned, you know, Fat Man Zoom is talking about Ethereum, but if you're looking at something that's a little bit more stock related, obviously GBTC is something that we talked about uh, in our latest video. Um, I also think that Square, PayPal, some of these uh, other platforms are going to be really great. I mean, we've already seen how Square has been influenced by Bitcoin, so uh, they're directly invested in the currency. And so as, 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 as that goes up, Square has gone up as well. But Square has so much other things that they're going that, that are going for them from a POS standpoint and, and small business. So I think that that's a perfect hedge. Something like that would be would be something good to get into. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned PayPal because I wanted to point out because we talk about Square a lot. And yeah, when you first started getting on Square, I mentioned that like I was more of a fan of PayPal. Um, and I want people to really consider PayPal as well yeah. and look at them both and decide because I'm still um, a bigger fan of PayPal, if not even more so now. Um, and it actually, when you look at the one month, two month, three month, it's outperformed Square, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah it has. And so um, I think people are kind of sleeping on PayPal. Maybe Square's a little bit sexier, but like I'm, I'm excited about what PayPal is doing. And I think that it's as good of an option, if not better an option for Square and people need to be, before they make their final decision, look at them both and really take a hard look at them both and figure out what they do and do your due diligence because um, I, I think I think people are sleeping on PayPal. Well, I mean, I think it goes without saying that I think a lot of people definitely slept on their latest earnings report and what they said they have going and their outlook and everything else. I mean, they, they are still absolutely crushing it. So I definitely agree with you there. Um, People still going after Doge, by the way. It's insane. <laughs> Doge is actually down a lot, uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty wild stuff uh, that people are still going crazy over it. All right, so that is kind of our topic of discussion. We'll get into our top five stocks that we are watching this week in just a second. But first, I want to invite you over to the Chaos Crew. If you guys see the folks that have the bulls and bears next to their names, they are part of our channel membership, our Chaos Crew folks, where they get a daily watch list from us every single day. Five stocks that are moving in the market that you may want to take a look at, you might want to take a look at uh, before the market opens. Also, you get access to our portfolios, things that we're investing in. You can watch us go in and out of stuff. And we'll let you guys know what, what and why we're doing that. Um, uh, we also have a private Discord as well as, as uh, being a channel member. If you guys want to be a part of that, make sure you hit and join next to subscribe or there is a link in the description as well. If you just want the free watch list, check out the pin, pin post in the chat right now. Just go to ownthechaos.com. You can get a free watch list from us. It's a little bit more simpler or simplified, I should say, uh, than our Chaos Crew folks get. But if you guys just want a simple watch list, go to ownacast.com, get the list, and we'd be happy to have you a part of the crew. Chris West said, PayPal said they are not getting into crypto. I like Square. Where did you see that? And what does that mean? Because that's where I, that's where I get my crypto. This was him. 
Is this a five o'clock free crack giveaway? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Somebody on crack. <laughs> All right. So um, the top five stocks that we're watching this week. So if you guys are, are visiting for the first time, first of all, welcome. Every Sunday we go over the top five stocks that we are watching for this week. I come with three. Fat Man Zoom, com- Fat Man Zoom comes with two. We just alternate. We give our thoughts on all of them. Uh, but my first one is going to be Tesla. Usually during earnings season, we kind of like go hard on earnings but Tesla has some interesting things going for it. And it had a lot to do with uh, the um, current administration and then reinstating some of the tax credits that they are get- they're giving for um, electric vehicles. So Tesla has actually come down quite a bit. I think some they, there was some scrutiny uh, as far as the Bitcoin stuff is concerned. People were a little bit nervous about it. Uh, but I think it gave us a certain, a really good opportunity and I'll share the chart with you in a second, but I did want to shout out, um, uh, hold on, uh, Todd Landon for sharing, uh, the electric article, uh, electric article by, um, electric <laughs> laying out the $7,000 tax credit and adding 400,000 new vehicles per manufacturer. So before it was only two, they were uh, capped out at 200,000. And now they extended it to 400K uh, cars, $7,000 credit if you're buying an EV. So that's actually really big news, not only just for Tesla, but all the other automakers that are getting into EVs. I think that's great news. Um, Before it was $7,500, so it's just a little bit lower. Either way, I think that is an incredible incentive. If you guys are looking to buy an EV, you get $7,000 tax credit. you know, it still needs to go through the legislative process, but it's likely to be adopted uh, since we know who's controlling um, the Senate, the House and the, uh, you know, the presidency. So I think it's going to go through. It should should do with ease, should do so with ease, I should say. Uh, I really like Tesla. I actually ended up um, adding quite a bit to it uh, on Friday, right at $800 a share. And if you guys can see this, this is a pretty good uh, support that it's held up to this point. We've had a little bit of spikes here and there below 800, just below that around 795, but it has held really well above 800. And on that 800 spot was money for me on Friday. I hope it continues. I think it will. That $7,000 tax credit, uh, if it goes through, which it looks like it may, it's going to be huge for that and many of the other ones. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but uh, I did level three on Wednesdays as I normally do, Yeah, where we do live trading in the morning. And I had said, so at the time, um, Wednesday, 16th, 17th, 18th, 11th, so it had gone down, and it was at about 820 at the time, I think, and it had gone, and the day before, it was at 850. Yeah. And I looked at the chart, and I said, <laughs> this thing could come down to $780. Yes. Um, and I think I was met with a little bit of... Uh, um, you're smoking crackness. <laughs> Not that for me. Went down I, to seven eighty five. Yeah, that thing went down to seven eighty five. It kissed it. It kissed seven eighty five for a brief moment. Yeah, and. Um, and so I've, I've said this multiple times every step of the way, and I'm not like, I don't think this is hard to call. I, I think people get a little bit caught up in, in their feelings towards Tesla and um, think like, oh, no way these things can happen. Here's the reality. It could go down to 700. I'm not saying it will. Yeah. If it does, I will be loading the boat on it. Oh, my God, yeah. Um, but this is definitely good news. I think this should run. And every time I say these things, I get I get met with the same comments, which is, you don't know what you're talking about. da 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 Okay, whatever. Um, understand this is a volatile stock, and we get – to benefit both well we get to benefit both ways if yeah. we add to it on the way down um and also if we get the run-up i'm hoping that run-up comes up comes soon um i do think i was excited when i heard about that ev tax credit news i think that's going to be huge um but you know man i'm i'm back full position in this yeah. so i don't have much to add um but yeah if it if it gets back down below uh, $800, I'm going to, again, I'm going to find money. (laughs) I'm going to break a couple rules a little bit. Um, So, yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I like this one a lot. The next stock we have is Shopify. So, Shopify has earnings on Wednesday, March 17th. um, And I believe it's after hours. It's after hours. Yeah. $1.24 a share of the estimates. I have them coming in at $1.49 a share. I think they beat. I'm not really... um, 
concerned about them missing. I really just think it's a question of how much they beat by. Uh, and I think 149 is actually pretty conservative. This Shopify, we've said time and time again, is doesn't get enough love. Um, I mean, it has grown almost 500% in the past three years, but Amazon still gets the love. And when I look at Shopify, I actually think that from a competitive perspective, it's positioned really well yeah. um, because it allows it to, from the e-commerce space, it allows their customers to customize their stores. Whereas like you got something like Amazon, you're kind of stuck with what you have. Um, and then the app developers on Shopify allow these online stores to um, really dif differentiate themselves. So I love this company. Their revenue growth last quarter was 95 or 96%. The quarter before I believe it was 97%. Yeah. Uh, I expect to see revenue growth over a hundred percent. Um, I'm excited about these numbers. I don't know what's going to happen after earnings, but I feel really bullish about Shopify for the rest of the year. I do too. And you know, it's gone absolutely insane. This is uh last week. This is the weekly chart. I just wanted to break this out. Um, and it went from uh, $1,300 a share all the way up to almost 1500. And that 1500 mark, I think is going to be a really tough resistance for it. But if we can break up over this, I think it's going to spell uh, an abs astronomical move. And I agree with you that I think that this kind of like lives in the shadows of Amazon. But when we talk about, e-commerce and where it's at right now, it, they still are, there's still more retail shopping being done in stores by far than in e-commerce. And so people who think that there is no more room to run for these are sadly mistaken. Uh, and I think it's going to continue to do extremely well. So uh, looking at this, you know, I would not be afraid of all time highs here, but just kind of watch and see how earnings play out. We saw that the earnings from Amazon were a little bit lackluster, but from all of the other, uh, e-commerce plays, Etsy and the like, they all did really well after after uh, earnings. So not saying that, uh, you know, you should play earnings. We always talk about how earnings are a bit of a crapshoot if you're just looking to play them specifically, but we like to use them as tools to try to determine how we want to play them either before or afterwards. So oftentimes you'll see a run up into earnings if there's some pretty high expectations. Uh, if, it do, if it does go crazy, there could be a, a very uh, distinct likelihood that there might be some profit taking afterwards if it's just what everybody was expecting all that good stuff, but I like Shopify a lot. Still hella bullish on this thing um, as well. Now for me, the next one here, this is an interesting one because I still am on the fence as to how to handle this, but I wanted to talk about it because a lot of people have been asking me about it. It's gone on an insane run uh, over the last week. And really since the beginning of the pan pandemic, this has just been, if, if people were in this before the pandemic and, and just kind of held tight and did, and, you know, and just kind of, straight up invested in this long-term investing. They are, they have to be filthy rich at this point, but it's Fiverr. Fiverr has gone absolutely insane uh, and is continuing to go absolutely insane. But I think fat man zoom that Fiverr in particular is something that I think is just getting started as crazy as that sounds. So um, I was looking through my notes. Um, if you guys don't know what Fiverr is, um, they uh, they're a company who basically is, uh, helping the freelancer kind of uh, support themselves. So if you, you were somebody who maybe lost their job and but they have a certain skill, especially when it comes to, you know, graphic design or all kinds of stuff, really, uh, that Fiverr is the one for you. They take about 5% commission, the rest of it's yours. And um, they've been able to make a really uh, good uh, business model based off of that. Um, I'm sorry, it's a 5% five, 5 service charge fee and then a 20% cut of the freelancer's revenue, uh, but still a really good business model. Um, they t uh, YouTube takes more. Well, we're not going to even talk about that. But um, Chris Terrell, Terrell, former CEO of Angie's List, had uh, gone on record stating that this gig economy is, in fact, very much in its infancy. Uh, and so... I agree. I think that because of the pandemic, because of people working remotely or losing their jobs, that they're looking to things like Fiverr to be able to support themselves and actually become their own entre entrepreneur, becoming their own boss. Um, they have earnings on uh, Thursday pre-market. Estimated earnings per share are 12 cents. I say they come in around 20. I like Fiverr a lot. I think that I would be careful holding on to this or trying to play earnings, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing go off after earnings as well. Yeah, I have it coming in at 16 cents. Um, you mentioned it, it's a thousand percent up, 
the past year, sixty-five <laughs> percent year to date. Um, it's right on the threshold of profitability. Yeah. Um, it's tough because their chief competitor, which is Upwork, hasn't had the same move. Has had a great move, but not the same. So you could argue that Upwork might might be in a better spot. Um, certainly, their fundamentals are actually slightly better. Um, it's only five up five hundred percent the past year. Hold on, something happened. Pause. Just lost my camera. <laughs> I think they can hear us. So just keep talking, I guess. Hold on a second. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure. I know we talk a lot about Fiverr and I know that's the one that, that typically is the one we've been trading, but, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't do either one of them, but Upwork definitely looks like a good, like a good opportunity. What happens when you try to share something else, try to share a chart that doesn't show up either? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, We're just going to keep it this way. That was weird. Uh, try to do it back. Oh, hey. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so 20 cents a share. I think uh, I think there needs to be some profit taking in order. Um, but I agree with you from a long-term perspective. Fiverr, definitely, um, I think people are underestimating the, their ability to continue to grow. Um and the one thing to think about is, I've talked about this before, when we get back to reopening, which is clearly going to be this year, yeah. Um, the same jobs aren't going to be there. Right. And I don't think people are really looking at that the way they should. And um, I don't want to say fearing it, but factoring that in, um, because I think that's going to be a real issue that nobody's really talking about. And so... People are going to need to make money. We've talked about the fact that companies are realizing they don't need, um, they can have people work remotely. Yeah. I think they're realizing efficiencies. They've had to trim back. And companies don't usually, when they trim the fat, and I, I hate saying that speaking as far as like, um, like jobs as well. Right. But that's a reality. When you have companies trim, usually they don't come back the same way. They try to keep it tight. Yeah. Um, and so they may add more jobs, but it's not a one-to-one -one for what they removed. And so that's the sad fact, which means that I think the gig economy is only in still in its infancy. And so there's going to be more and more people looking to make money. And I think there's more legitimate routes to make money where you don't even need to go back to work. I think that's the other thing people are going to realize. They're going to have these side hustles and they're going to realize, hey, I can actually make an honest living with this. Why do I need to go back to work? Yeah, exactly. And so there's a huge upside to Fiverr, in my opinion. Um, it's interesting that you say like, when you're, when, and we both talked about it being in its infancy, but man, it's just crazy to, to see how this is kind of, this is the way that things were going to this point. Uh, but then the, the pandemic kind of just caused all of this to explode. And it's almost kind of like we're in an, another industrial revolution, uh, so to speak, but it's yeah. just uh, from, from a remote work or technical side of things. It's, it's pretty cool to see. Um, I imagine this will be something that we talk about. Our kids learn about in history. <laughs> Yep. All right. So the number four stock is going to be Fastly. So Fastly has earnings on Wednesday, March 17th. Yep. Um, their earnings per share is 10 cents, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And, I th and I think, you know what? I think it's a lo loss of 10 cents. I'm sorry. Really? Can you pull that up really quick? I'm trying to figure out if it's 10 cents yeah, or yeah. not because my estimate might be wrong. I got you. Uh, a loss of 10 cents. So... That sounds right. Um, so my prediction is two cents a share. They have only had one profitable quarter in um, their history, and that was two quarters ago. Yes. I think... It is a loss of 10 cents. They are going to report another profitable quarter. Um, and here's the thing around Fastly. Uh, so Fastly, it's, you can see it's trying to move back up, but it looks like... When it was at the end of October, it had a it had a nice fall there. You can see, and it's trying to make its way back. That was the TikTok drama, if you recall. Well, that's the thing I want to bring up. Um, I want to remind everybody, Fastly's biggest customer was then and still is now 
TikTok. Remember that? Yes, 12 percent of the revenue at that time. Guys, let me remind you about all these things. Um, workhorse. Still waiting on that. Remember when Kodak was supposed to be something? <laughs> still waiting on that. Yeah. Um, the Walmart Oracle deal. Still waiting on that. I got bad news for you people. A lot of those things probably aren't going to happen. Yeah. And I don't know why you believe they were going to happen before. The reality is, is like companies run things. Yeah. Right. And as, as you can like it or not, that's how it works. And as much as we want to think that administrations can really um, do these type of things, it's, it's hard to accomplish them. So will Oracle and Walmart um, buy TikTok? Maybe, but yeah. I highly, highly doubt that's ever going to happen. So let's remember that's still their largest customer. There's been a little bit of uncertainty. That's why you saw the move down because there's speculation that, or Biden administration has said they're going to look into Chinese companies and so fastly gets fallen under that umbrella. There's nothing that makes me concerned about fastly as far as the partnership with TikTok. Um, and so we'll see what happens. They're the leader in edge computing. I think people are going to learn more and more about edge computing, but this is a great company. And I think this is an op awesome opportunity to see what happens after earnings, see what they report. Um, and this could potentially go off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is something that I said that I, I was really bullish on at $30 a share. And this still has just done extremely well. Obviously had the the uh, the drama with TikTok. But if you look here, when it went up to, uh, you know, around $103 a share, $105 a share, it came back down. This actually, Fat Man Zoom, do you just want to go ahead and shout this out? This pattern here. Probably a cup and handle. That probably is a cup and handle. That is a cup and handle. How about that? So uh, from you know, around the end of December to the end of uh, January, we saw this nice bullish pattern and actually ended up having a breakout. So from a technical standpoint, it's actually broke out quite nicely all the way up to $120 a share and has, has now since fallen off. I think that these earnings are going to do really well too. My estimated earnings per share is at one cent per share. Uh, I think that they do really, really well. I still think that they're going to do uh, do well in the future too, because of everything we've talked about, especially with Fiverr and everything else. But also look out. I just wanted to give an honorable mention to Ring Central. They have earnings this week too. So it was a close one for me to put this on the watch list, but keep an eye on Ring Central as well. They're in the same space. All of these in the industry are going to do really well. So just uh, keep that on your watch list too. So for me. Uh, coming up next is going to be um, da, 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 Roku. So if you guys, um, whoops, man, Welcome. I just cannot run the board today. <laughs> um, so, but anyhow, so if you guys uh, heard me talk about Disney last week, Disney was on Stockwatch Sunday and I was really bullish on just their streaming services. They're really starting to make a headway into, uh, overtaking Netflix in subscribership. Uh, and I think it's probably going to happen within the next year to 18 months, but Roku has the best of everything. If you watch regular TV, you can use your Roku. If you if you watch Disney Plus, if you watch Netflix, all of your streaming services can live in one place, and that is on Roku. They're, they have earnings this Thursday. Their estimated earnings per share are at a loss of seven cents, and I also have them coming in at one cent per share. I think this could be their first ca cash or one of their first cash positive quarters um, this time around, and uh, I think that this is going to probably be. Uh, number two, potentially, to uh, Disney as far as streaming services go. Uh, and then I think eventually we could see Netflix fall down to third place, Fat Man Zoom. I think you're smoking crack. I don't think there's any chance that happens. <laughs> Is it a five o'clock free crack giveaway? <laughs> Maybe. I actually have a soundbite for you. So if I am wrong. One of us has made a gross error. <laughs> <laughs> little Samuel L. <laughs> I got some new sound. Do you got any somewhere. Denzel? I don't. I, I was looking for a good one. Man. Oh, you mother. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> I may or may not have you YouTubed how to do a Denzel impersonation. <laughs> you like hunch over? You have, oh, okay. Okay. You I'm, I'm getting there. You gotta have the cigarette in your mouth. I, I'm getting there. Um... <laughs> So I so I want to be clear. I know that Roku. I already see the chat going crazy. I know that Roku's already made a crazy move. It's still going to go. It's not even done, in my opinion. It's at four eighty four. Four eighty four eighty five was the high last week. All time highs for Roku. It's not done, in my opinion. 
<laughs> uh, I agree. I, I mean, I like the company from an ad revenue revenue standpoint. Revenue. Yeah, or ad revenue standpoint. <laughs> On top of the fact that um, when you think about the smart TVs and its positioning there, it makes sense. I'm just more saying you're smoking crack about your comment that it's going to pass. I mean, you're talking about it. It's <laughs> it's at 50 million some subscribers, and Netflix is over 200 million. Um, woo, we'll see. So that will be. That is an incredibly bold prediction, and that will be the greatest prediction of all time if that Disney comes true. Disney number one, Roku number two, Netflix number three. By when? When? Uh, a timeline. By 2025. Okay. Man, I hope we're still on by then. Somebody remind us in 2025. Esperanza, remind us in 2025. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, no, but I have them. Would you say one cent a share? Or yes, I had it coming in at one cent per share. Cash positive. I also had them cash positive. I had them at two cents a share. So we're right there. Um, But no, I, um, oops, wrong one. I do, sorry, I had them at five cents. I was looking at Fastly. Oh, I had them at five cents. Ooh, okay. So I like the company. And and honestly, I don't think it needs to beat Netflix to be able to, it does not, to go off, be a success story and continue to roll because. As Netflix sees success, so does Roku. And yes. that's why I love it, is that as all these streaming platforms see success, they will win too. So um, I also think is, I mean, today is all about stocks that are just um, underloved. Yeah. You know, and this is another example of one that, I mean, it, it gets love, but from our channel, we don't give it enough love. We've been giving it more love the past couple months. Yeah. Um, but in all fairness, this sucker, I think it has more upside than Netflix. That's what I'll say. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I, so it's, it's, I have to say, um, all of the stocks that we're talking about that are very lofty and we're sitting here saying that we still think that they have room to go. I just want to point this out because- some of the influencers that we have talked about calling for a crash yet again had a live stream tonight talking about a crash. Uh, and it's still go. It's not going to happen. These stocks are going to continue to go up. I don't, there's not one part of me that wants to be afraid of going after these all time highs. You guys saw me buy, buy Disney at 190 last week. And I'm not even fretting about it. It's going to continue to go up. These are going to do good, do well. I'm bullish on Roku and bullish on all these. And, uh, I think that, um, yeah, man, it's just, it's just getting started in 2021. Yeah, and this is it's this is a tale as old as time. <laughs> Song as old as rhyme. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're not going to predict a crash. Sorry, it's hate just, to break the news. You're not going to be able to predict it. Y- you could say a crash is coming every single day, and I guess you'll eventually be right. Yes, you will. So we can only trust the chart. Yeah, there is there is obviously can be a case, um, but. Nothing, no indicators say that that crash is going to happen, at least in the near term. Yeah. And so what we've seen is um, it, it's things we can't predict. It's things we can't see. And so we can try our best. I mean, I'm concerned about the real estate, um, the real estate market and what happens when the moratorium ends. Uh, I'm worried about the rising rates in general. Yeah. But the reality is that still things keep going up and until um the indicators say different we're in a bull market yeah and so um if you want to try to predict it great if you're worried about a crash you know you talk about not being out of it out of the market there's not a bone in your body that wants to be out well i still think at least you stay conservative like yeah i felt towards the end of the year i was towards the end of the year i was like okay what's going to happen in january i think there might be a little bit of a slowdown. So moving to things like overall ETFs or indexes, you could potentially do it, but you can still be in the market and be conservative. Dividend stocks. If you're really, really worried, dividend stocks are a great opportunity because as they go down, your yield's going to go up and you could add on to them if you get into the dividend aristocrat stocks. Shout out to our dividend aristocrat rest crap video if you guys want to see or you can just buy some penny stocks because that market is hot right now <laughs> that's true God damn i'm not my best week in penny land last week yeah um yeah i mean it's been it's been crazy <laughs> um also because you've been getting me into penny stocks a little bit more when i started out with uh with us working together i tried to dabble in penny stocks and yeah. then that was when you were making the shift so we we both just kind of rolled um, our focus into big board, blue chip growth stocks, stuff like that. And so um, 
penny stocks were put on a pause. I've been getting back into them, but like really just um, trades we call out. Yeah. Nothing that I'm finding or looking at. So I do want to um, dabble more into that, but you've been getting more into penny stocks. I just began Don Franz course for options. So yeah. I'm, I'm investing my time heavily into options for 2021. So shout out to Don. Frank. Like He's it. actually in the house. Um, like He's it. got an options course. So check out his channel if you want to check it out. But I'm going to actually be taking the course and I'm going to be learning options this year. And I'm going to be a monster by the end of the year. I love it. I think I'm I love a it. monster. We'll see. I like the PW coaching asking community penny stock pick for this week. It's it's B R L L barrel energy is going to, I think it's going to go crazy still. I hope to God it does. A dollar, here we come. Been in that thing since seven cents. I actually like, I actually like um, penny stocks as community plays more so than regular stocks. I like that. Um, Follow them on Twitter. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. Thanks, Steve. At Fat Man Zoom, at Own the Chaos. If you guys want to follow us on Twitter, we shout out penny stocks. We shout out everything that we're that we're in. Uh, We give everybody in our Chaos Crew folks. the, uh, the heads up before we actually end up making any kind of social media post. So if you guys want to get the head start on that, if you guys want to get into what we're, we're getting into or just kind of at least trying to follow along with us, uh, hit the join button next to subscribe or the link in the description. We'd love to have you guys as part of the crew. Uh, last thing before we go into the questions, I do want to say we have a video coming out, speaking of options, yes. where we each brought three options, um, three stocks to the table that uh, Don – would choose one of the six total ones between you and me. And I'll just say, not to give anything away, but my three went the F off they last did. week. They All did. of them. They did. So I'm ready. Don, I'm ready. <laughs> People, I'm ready. All right, last. What is the cheesecloth condom stock pick of the week, friend? I was going to pick all of the cannabis sector, but I'll just go with Tilray. Okay. Uh, uh, Tilray and, and Aurora Cannabis. We'll just put that out there too. Both of those are just, I know that people are going to try to buy this thing and, and think that they're going to play some sort of dead cat, dead cat bounce on it. It ain't coming back, folks. Really? I, I mean, not for not for a minute. And they have earnings on Wednesday too. Yeah, FYI. it's going to go through the floor. Really? Yeah, Tilray's, Tilray is a trash company. Wow. Their balance sheet is trash. Do you think it goes below $15? Unless they like give some crazy serious pump, you know, like oh, you know, because like they lo- they love to feed, to push out fluff, mm-hmm. uh, and if investors take the bait, then it could see a bit of a pop. But if they don't and see right through the bullshit, uh, then uh, I think it probably falls on its face. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Uh, shout out to Evan. Thanks for the donation. Please do a top penny stock under a dollar video soon. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Um, we are we are working to incorporate more penny stocks. We've already begun yeah. in our Discord, yep. um, in our watch, in our um, level three. So there's going to be more. It's tough because like when you have such a a, fo- a big following, you know, you try to make sure that you're you're not trying to get people into into trouble. So as long as we have to do a good job of communicating, All the right. penny stock world stuff. Yeah. So let's get into these questions. I'm actually going to start with Mad Dicks, who I just saw his question. I'm sorry, um, what? Mad Dicks. Okay. Continue. <laughs> I've always called him Mad Dicks. <laughs> He's a green bull. I know. I know. Uh, Madhus, Madhusudun, Madhus, <laughs> I'm sorry. Madhusudun <laughs> dicks it. And I like Mad Dicks. Uh, he mentioned. He just mentioned Big C and their earnings are coming, which Big, they are. Speaking of Mad Dicks. I just missed. Um, actually, B, Big C was the one I was going to do. It was the third option on the yeah. table. Um, their earnings are this week as well. He says their profit margin is ne- negative is reducing. They might turn into positive this time. Hold or sell. What do you say, Brad? I say uh, that I would probably hold. hold. Yes. Hold. Oh, I need hold. that. I need that. I need that. We need that. Yeah, yeah. I am William Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. William Wallace is eight feet tall. He should. What does he say? He shoots lightning bolts from his eyes and uh, fireballs from his arse. From his arse, or something like that. I, I I knew that quote. If you go on my Instagram, I have it. How did I screw that up? <laughs> oh, it's not fireballs. It's lightning bolts from his eyes and something something from his arse. <laughs> Help me out, people. <laughs> I am William Wallace. All right. 
Sorry. It is also D's Nuts' favorite stock. Big C. (laughs) Just throwing that out there. D's Nuts, shout out. Um, Yeah, we like that. Good call. Uh, Looking forward to those earnings as well. I really like Big C. I love it. I like it a lot. What movie is that from? I like it a lot. Uh, It is a Jim Carrey movie. Yeah. It's Ace Ventura. Yes, sir. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Took me a second. Is it too late to get into Square or wait for the pullback? Um, it's that's a tough question. I've I think you wait. I think you wait. Yeah. I so if I'm looking at the chart, I think it definitely makes sense to at least wait till some sort of pullback, maybe around to two sixty five. I would love it if it came back down to the low two hundreds, but I just don't know if that happens anytime soon. Unless something crazy happens. Oliver Thorpe. Hi, Brad and Fat Man Zoom. Great show as always. Thank you. It is Dumb and Dumber. Do you? Oh, yeah, it is Dumb and Dumber. My bad. It is Dumb and Dumber. Dumber. I knew it was Jim Carrey something. Harry, your hands are freezing. (laughs) Samsonite. Uh, I was way off. (laughs) Uh, Mock. Ing. (laughs) No. Mock. Ing. Yeah. Ing. (laughs) Oh, man. That is a good impersonation. Harry, your hands are freezing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you think it's a good idea to buy ETFs in hot topic areas such as fintech, AI, biotech, et cetera, et cetera? No. Or best just to pick one or two companies? Yes. I disagree. Mm. I, I, well, I kind of disagree. How much time are you willing to put in and how much knowledge do you have? So if you have the time... I would definitely recommend finding the best two, one or two. And I think we all should have time. Yeah. But there's certain things like biotech. I don't know enough about. There's too much like uncertainty around stuff like that. So if I was like, I really want to get in biotech. Yeah. I'd probably, I'd be okay with getting an ETF. And I personally probably would do that. Although altogether, I wouldn't want to get into biotech and I don't want to invest in things I don't really know about. So I think that's the only use case if you get into ETFs. If you're like, I just want to forget it. I don't have the time to look at it. I don't have the time, like, but I believe in this industry. Yeah, I think that's fair. But like my own personal, so like if we're just asking me my own personal things, I just don't do ETFs because I do like doing the the due diligence and I do like going after individual companies because if you do, most cases you end up having a much higher return than those ETFs anyway, because the ETFs are also dragging along the companies that are underperforming. So sure. that's the, that's yep. the downside. Um, so that's just my own thing. Uh, but if you guys don't have the time and you'd rather just kind of take the more simpler, uh, less complicated route than ETFs might be for you. But if you have the time, like Fat Man Zuma saying, to kind of do some work and look at some of these individual stocks, and it might end up paying off for you uh, much more than just hopping into an ETF for for the the hell of it. And and it's not a lot of work when you really think about it. No. Like I know everybody wants this the the return to happen quickly, but um, you know, you put in the time and you're better for it by getting this knowledge and um and it's not a lot. So if you really just don't want to watch it and manage it, yeah. fair, but guys Think about the long game. Play the long game. Just learn a little bit of it, a little, little at a time. Do the research, due diligence, a little at a time. Um, also, keep in mind with ETFs. Look at the expense ratio. Yes. Um, Simon Pike, Pike, Pike. What are your thoughts about REITs such as AHT? It seems like people will go back to hotels post COVID. Perhaps they will. I don't like REITs at all unless they don't have any debt to worry about. Um, you know, what lenders coming in and calling the notes, that's what happened a lot with the crash and, uh, you know, the early parts of the pandemic. And it was like really scary stuff, but look at this chart on AHT. There's, I don't know if I want to be anything that's this, that's this scary volatile, um, for a lot of reasons, but like to your point, as far as, um, you know, uh, people coming back and using hotels, I think there's definitely something to be said for that. But I think also, um, Companies like Airbnb are going to take over the industry, in my opinion. Um, and, and so I think that getting into something like this is a, is a bit risky. In my, I think it is anyway. I'm looking at the chart. It kind of looks like it's bullish uh, yeah. since the first of the year. Um, so it is trending in the right direction, but it is definitely scary volatile. Yeah, it really depends on your time horizon. Um, 
So I think this is actually set up for a decent asymmetrical trade opportunity. Yeah. Um, below for, below 240, I'd be out or below 230 ish. I'd, I'd be out. Yeah. So if, if somebody would want, has time and would be willing to take that risk, I think it's worthy um, because it only gives you about 4% downside um, and at least 50% upside. Um, so who knows? If you want something at this price point and don't care what industry you're in, just go buy some Drive Shack. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the <laughs> truth? Let's get that over three dollars today <laughs> or this week. Uh, Steve King, what's going on, my man? He said he has big news for us. Are you pregnant? That's what they said. <laughs> Is he having a baby? Uh, the, 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 I mean, to be he's going to tell us. I not, would not laugh today. my ass off. Like, did it did it happen during Battery Day? <laughs> um, Steve, because that would be hilarious. Uh, by the way, Happy Valentine's Day, people. Oh yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. What a BS holiday. It is. Uh, how do you guys feel about Twilio? I've been in it since, 2000, uh, since 2011. Still haven't sold a dime. It's over, up over $400. Wow. What a great Unbelievable. move. Um, We've loved Twilio. Uh, and I was thinking about pinching off half of it. <laughs> we have, we have, uh, we have loved it. And I mean, you got a kid on the way, so I would say, Probably cash in some of that just to, you know, think about the kid and the expenses that are going to be coming up. Yeah. No, I mean, this chart looks great. Uh, you could always take profits. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I, I also could say. Bull flag. There's a bull flag. Pattern. Roll with this thing. Like yeah. I, knowing Steve, I mean, bro, you know what to do. Yeah. You're just trying to, you're, you're honestly, you're just showing off, trying to be like, yo, I've been in Twilio since 211. <laughs> Gets us over 441 and it's going to, it's going to. We're going to see some more fireworks out of this thing, I think. I would be more, if I was in it and I was like, all right, I did it since 2011, $211. Yeah, you could trim some off, but it's been such a nice mover. I think you just set like a, a solid stop loss where you're like, okay, this is going to turn into a downtrend and just move that up, you know, because not saying you have to sell all of it, but like, you could take a pinch off now, or you can set a stop loss and lock in and, yeah. and leave some on the table. Um, but I think this keeps moving. I don't see I do this too. coming back down. If it were me and I were to do that, to, you know, go through that strategy that you explained, I would uh, probably put a stop around 428 because if it breaks below that, probably a good likelihood it may come down a little bit lower to maybe perhaps at least 411. So if you want to lock in some profit, and, and kind of like, um, you know, um, how do I want to say this? Uh, hedge yourself a little bit but and, and allow it to keep running, but also take profit if you have to. 428 would probably be the spot that I put a stop in at. And Hope um, says that uh, if it was called BJ and Steak Day, you guys would all be, be all for it. Isn't that what March 14th is supposed to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm just putting that out there. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Fiverr, uh, PW Coaching, what's a good entry for Fiverr? Uh, <laughs> that's a great question. I should have talked about that when we talked, when we, when I mentioned it. Under 300? Um, yeah, you know, a 300 is actually going to be a support for it. It was a resistance uh, previously. So I would say that if it comes back down to uh, um, three, yeah, 301, 300, that's probably where I'd, I'd watch for that. But it's it's a pretty weak support, so watch for it. If it doesn't hold that very well, there's probably a good 280. likelihood 285. Yeah. I would, yeah, if it goes below two, uh, 300, I would just wait. Yeah. I think you might get that 285. I think so, too. Um, all right, next question we have. Jay Chandrandis, Chandradis, Brad and Fat Man, thank you for your advice. I'm up 100%. Boom. 100% on Fiverr. I had a question on Snap. Are you bullish? That little You like that little flex? That was a little mini flex. I like that. Um, had a question on Snap. Are you bullish on this short term? My Sunday is not complete without your show. Thanks, brother. <laughs> we appreciate that. Um, so the chart looks bearish, to be honest with you. Uh, just over the last several days, if we just look over the last week and a half or so, it actually looks pretty bearish. looks like it's kind of making a trend downward. So if it does continue to come down here a little bit more on the short term, look to see if it holds above $60. I think $60 is going to be a really nice support for it. If it holds that area, we start to see it move back up, then that's where I would probably start accumulating a position at. Uh, I, I don't know if I caught that if you, 
if he was still in it or not. But um, no, no, I don't think he's. I don't know what he's. Are you bullish on the short term? I don't know. I don't think that I would be bullish on it short term. I think that I would. I think it has a little bit more room to go. Uh, coming down here to maybe around sixty dollars as a to act as a support. Well, you can actually look um, right before it has that low. It had a similar. It kind of looked similar. It had the drop and then it moved back up. Yeah, but um, it's done this. I will say, looking at that, it is bearish. But given that $60, that right there is what I've been doing more and more of with the asymmetrical trades. Yeah. Because I would be out at 60. Like, yep. I wouldn't worry. I would actually get into this, set my stop, and then just be like, okay, if it goes below 60, I'm just going to wait because I could get it at probably below, like, maybe 53 or yeah. potentially. So um, I would keep it tight, but it does look bearish. However, you could do an asymmetrical trade on that. Um, and if it does go up, like a Fisker type move, yep. it could be a monster. Um, also, another stock that has shown it could have some monster moves up and down. Yeah. Brian Demarith, last question. Is QS a buy at $54? Had huge spikes in the past, upgraded by Morgan Stanley last week to a buy. Morgan Stanley went on to upgrade spree yeah, on crazy. Friday. They had money to spend. Uh, uh, this is why Fisker moved on Friday, too. Uh, I would say. Be careful with this, because the only reason that this has moved up is because of Morgan Stanley. Um, so I think the move's already kind of been made here. I think that QS could have a nice long-term potential, so it depends on how long you're willing to hold this. But I think you're going to have opportunities to get it cheaper than where it's at at 55. I just do. I don't, I, I don't think that this is going to last forever. And I would say that if you wanted to wait, you probably do get an opportunity at it back at 50 bucks at least. Um, could very well easily see another offering out of them. Sam M just wants a prediction. I actually like this question. Is Tesla up next week or do you see it hitting 775? I, so, you know, I put it on the watch list this week for a reason. And I, I put it on here because I was bullish on it. So it's actually held this line pretty well, uh, you know, around 795 to mm -hmm. 800. I think that, uh, if people start to catch on with the, uh, the credits and that it starts to become more and more of a real thing and uh, people start buying into that, then I think that, that it is actually bullish this week. Yeah, I would agree. I feel good about it this week. Yeah, me too. Um, all right, guys. Uh, what else? We, we got anything else? That's it for the questions. It's kind of weird to just have a day off tomorrow. Yeah, I know. It's nice. <laughs> I know a lot of people like always talk about, oh, man, I, it's a three-day weekend. It's kind of a bummer. I'm like, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I'm good. Give me a four-day week. <laughs> I'll take it. That's going to do it for us, though, guys. Um, uh, if you are, again, want to be part of the Chaos Crew to get our daily watch lists, um, as well as, uh, you know, our, our portfolios and, and access to our Discord group, we would love to have you guys a part of that. Um, if you want to do, to do that, make sure that you're hitting that uh, join button next to subscribe. There's also a link in the description. Or if you would like to just get our free watch list, you're not interested in any of that stuff, um, five bucks is just too expensive for you. I mean, hey, it is what it is. You can get a free watch list from us at ownthechaos.com. Hit that pinned message there in the chat, and we would love to have you guys a part of the crew. Anything else from you, Fat Man Zoom? Oh, uh, man, is there anything else for me? No, nah, no, nah, there's nothing else. I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to be in Florida, by the way. Oh, well, that's going to do it for us. Thanks, guys, so much for <laughs> tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Hit that like button on your way out, by the way, and we are out of here. I quit this bitch. Bye. See ya.